Hello friends, this is CryptoPump, and I'm here to tell you how Dex Screener works. In this video, we will take a detailed look at Dex Screener, a handy tool I use to find promising tokens on decentralized exchanges. I will guide you step by step through all its sections, from the homepage to the finer details, so you can easily find tokens, analyze data, and select projects with potential. We will go slowly and clearly so that even beginners can understand. And to keep you updated on the latest news and market tips, join our Telegram channel. There I share insights that help you not miss important moments. The link is in the description, and now let's get started. I track tokens daily, and Dex Screener is a huge help in this. It's a web service that I use on both my phone and computer. It shows which projects are currently active and what to pay attention to. I started using it on Ethereum, where fees were high but there were almost no bots, and then I switched to Solana. There's a lot of fraud there but also plenty of opportunities. Want to know how it works? Let's open Dex Screener together and see what it has to offer. The first thing you'll see is the homepage. Right below the logo is a large number the total trading volume for the last 24 hours. For example, it might currently be $4.46 billion. This acts as an indicator of how active the market is. If this number increases, say by 20% compared to the previous day, it means trading is active and there are opportunities for growth. If it decreases, that's a sign of quietness. I usually wait for the market to start picking up again. A little to the right are the tabs with the names of blockchains, Ethereum, Solana, Binance Smart Chain, and a few others. It's like a switch. I can choose, for example Solana, click it, and the list of tokens refreshes, displaying only projects from that network. You can also select the network you're interested in and continue. Now let's scroll down a bit. Here we have the filters. They help sift through the unnecessary and keep only what's really needed. The first button is last 24 hours. I click on it and the service shows tokens that have appeared in the last 24 hours. Then I adjust the parameters. I set the trading volume to a minimum of $1 million. This signals that there's already money in the token and it's not dead. For liquidity, I choose a minimum of $50,000. This way I'm sure the token won't crash with the first sale. I also set the age to a maximum of 24 hours. Fresh projects often turn out to be the most interesting and I sort by momentum over the last five minutes to see what's happening right now. Once all the settings are complete, I click apply, and the list of tokens refreshes. Now it only shows those that meet my criteria, and I can choose which ones to work with. Let's take a close look at this list. It's divided into columns, and each one has its own significance. The first column shows the current price of the token in dollars. The second column displays the trading volume, indicating how much money has flowed through the token in the last 24 hours. The third column shows the age of the token, indicating how many hours or days it has existed. I analyze this data and choose a token that looks active, for example one with high volume and slight growth. Now I click on the token, and its page opens up. On the left, you see a large chart. This is like the heart of the token, showing what's happening with it. At the top above the chart are the time frame buttons. One second, one minute, five minutes, 15 minutes, and one hour. I set it to five minutes. It's easier to track the movement that way. On the chart, you'll see candles. Green ones indicate the price is rising, while red ones show it's falling. One candle represents five minutes of the token's life. Next to the time frame, you can choose the type of chart, line, candle, or area. I prefer candles. They are more illustrative. Further to the right, there's a toggle, price or market cap. I select market cap. This gives a better understanding of the token's significance rather than just its price in dollars. On the left side of the chart is the toolbar. Here, you can draw. I click on the line tool. This is a trend line that helps understand where the price is headed, or I can select the Fibonacci tool. I set levels where the price might stop or reverse. There's a button for percentages. It shows how much the token has risen or fallen over the selected period. At the bottom of the chart is the timeline, which runs from left to right, allowing you to see how everything has changed. On the right is the value scale, which depends on what you selected, price or market cap. Now let's look at the right side of the chart. Here you'll see the token ticker. A little lower are the links to social media, the website, Twitter, and Telegram. I always check these to verify the authenticity of the token. If there are no links or they look suspicious, it could be a sign of fraud and I prefer to steer clear of such tokens. Let's move on below the chart. Here are the token parameters. The first line shows the price in dollars, meaning how much it costs at the moment. The second line is liquidity, the actual funds circulating within the token. The third line indicates market capitalization, the total value of all tokens. The fourth line shows the price change over the past hour, six hours, or day. I usually look at the daily change to understand the overall trend. The fifth line shows the number of buys and sells for the day. The sixth line displays the trading volume in dollars. I pay attention to ensure that liquidity is at least a third of the market cap. For example, $30,000 with a market cap of $100,000. If the number of buys exceeds the number of sells, that's also a good sign. It means the token is in demand. Now let's move down to the tabs below the chart. The first one is transactions. I open it and you see that. The first column shows the time of the last transaction. The second column indicates the type of transaction, whether it's a buy or a sell. The third column displays the amount in dollars that was spent. The fourth column shows the number of tokens that were bought or sold. The fifth column is the transaction price. The sixth column lists the wallet address that conducted the operation. Buys are marked in green, while sells are in red. I click on the wallet. A window appears on the right with its details. How much it bought, how much it sold, and what the remaining balance is. This allows you to see who is trading and how actively they are doing so. The next tab is holders. This shows the number of people holding the token. If there are thousands, that's fine. But if one wallet controls almost the entire supply, that raises my concerns. The third tab is the bubble map. This is a kind of network of connections between wallets. I check for anything suspicious there. 
And finally, at the very bottom of the page is information about the creation date of the token, for example, eight hours ago. Next to it is the contract address, something like 7IPDW. I copy it and verify it with the official website of the token. This helps avoid fraud. There's an arrow on the right. I click on it and access Solskin, where I can see the entire history of the token. This is how Dex Screener helps track the market, find tokens, and understand where you can make a profit. It's not that complicated once you figure out what to pay attention to. Friends, now you know how to use Dex Screener step by step. Want more tips and ideas? Join our Telegram channel and trading chat. There you'll find always relevant and useful information. The link is in the description. Don't miss out. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to CryptoPump, give us a like, hit the bell, and see you soon.